Hey gang, welcome to another edition of Doc's Holiday Schlock, where it's a review of the movie The Bible Belt Slasher, The Holy Terror. Believe it or not, this is actually a sequel to a movie that I didn't even know even had a first one. So, I guess it's supposed to take place sometime after the events of the first movie, where Jason Fry is getting ready to find out what's going to happen to him after killing a bunch of people in the first movie. Friends and family members of the people that he killed in the first one show up to his court date only to find out that Jason will not be getting uh, severe punishment for his crime. They were hoping maybe, I don't know, electric chair, lethal injection, something like that. But it turns out the judge decides to put Jason back in a mental institu in institution. Did I forget to mention this movie took place in 1989? So yeah, between uh, that time and nowadays, doesn't seem like the law can do anything right. So of course, naturally, Jason escapes and goes back to the town of Wilkins, Tennessee in order to exact his revenge on the people who were there who saw his so-called conviction. And his doctor is in pursuit, his name is Landers, and he's trying to convince the cops, who of course are no help in this movie, hardly at all, until, you guessed it, it's almost too late for them to get off their butts and do anything. So Jason goes around and kills people and delivers some really bad pun liners. But our main female hero of the movie is named Rebecca, and of course that's who Jason is trying to get to, but of course along the way he kills, well like I said, friends and family members of the people he killed in the first one, along with a mailman and what I'm guessing is supposed to be a Jehovah's Witness, uh, the local sheriff, the deputy, and uh, pretty much anybody else, and a mailman. Yeah, he kills a mailman too. Well, after he finally gets all that done, he finally gets to Rebecca's house, which was supposed to be looked over by the deputy, but Jason chokes the deputy out. And the sheriff tries to go in to help out, but of course he gets killed off by Jason with some sort of a table saw kind of thing, or an electric saw. Uh, Landers finally arrives. Uh, Jason and Landers has a big fight. Jason stabs him in the chest, and it seems like Landers is dead. So it's up to Rebecca to try and take out Jason, which she does with a couple of shots to the chest. It looks like Jason is, is dead, and Landers may be soon with, dying with him. Uh, Rebecca gets on the phone, calls 911. Jason gets appears right behind her with a knife, about ready to stab her. But Landers puts in a couple of shots to Jason and finally maybe kills him. And basically tells him that his that uh, his God was not with him right then and there. And the movie mercifully ends. So why did this movie suck? Well, <laughs> well, it's another supposed Christmas horror movie, and the movie was supposed to take place in 1989. And the problem with this movie is that there are only two people that seem to have hairstyles that were supposed to be anywhere near what was supposed to be in the uh, in 1989, and they were our main female hero, Rebecca, but obviously that was a wig, and a friend of hers that works at a video store, and she's wearing a, she has a female mullet wig, which looks worse than what Rosie O'Donnell used to have. Um, and uh, the one-liners spewing out of Jason are just get more and more and more worse every time he says one and every time he kills somebody it just seems like either the kill goes on too long or his pun liners are way too many and it just keeps going on for maybe two or three minutes too too much uh, and again the, the vehicles in this movie they don't even look like they were even made in 89 and look like they were made about the same year this movie was put together so that kind of kills the uh, the thought of uh, of uh, this movie being made being done done around uh, 1989, and the acting is very very horrible. It's very very badly done. Uh, something I kind of noticed a little strange in this movie was that there were a lot of wrestling figures in the movie. Uh, there was a Macho Man Randy Savage action figure, a Jimmy Hart one. I'm not kidding. Uh, they appeared quite a few times in the movie. Um, 
but the movie is just all around bad. It's on the Kings of Horror channel if you want to check it out. But if you have seen it and you like, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Love to hear from you guys. Interesting little fact, though. The uh, movie was supposed to be taking place in Wilkins, Tennessee, which is kind of weird because I know a family named the Wilkins, and most of them live in a little town called Sugar Grove, which is about 20, 30 minutes away from here. Uh, but actually, it was actually uh, filmed in Union County, New Jersey. So, yeah. So if anybody out there who lives in Tennessee sees this review, can you tell me if there's actually a place called Wilkins, Tennessee, or is that something they just made up? Because I have no freaking clue. But there you guys have it. A review of the Bible Belt Slasher, The Holy Terror. Holy smackaroos. I hope they don't make a third one of this one. But if you like my videos, feel free to subscribe. If you have a horror, sci-fi, horror, comedy, horror, fantasy horror movie that was a sequel to something that you didn't see the first one of, and after seeing the sequel to it, you didn't want to see the first one, and you wanted to forget the sequel ever happened, send it my way and I'll get on it ASAP. Thank you guys so very, very much for watching, and until next time, as always, stay strong and rock on.